everybody. This is Aaron Eret with ABC uh, Fire Extinguisher Co Company, and he's going to give us a talk today on fire safety and the use of fire extinguishers. Glad you're here today. Thank you. Yeah, my name's Aaron. I'm with ABC Fire and Safety. We're out of Beloit in Janesville. Um, they've been around for about 40 years now, plus. I'm just going to give you guys a quick demo on how to use a fire extinguisher and what to look for. How many have extinguishers at home? Okay, I do. You don't have one? Okay. The smallest size is this size right here. They call this the two and a half pounder, which comes with a nozzle, not a hose. The next size bigger is a five pounder right here, which has a hose strap. Pull it out. This has a hose on it, and the next size bigger is a 10 pounder. What I like to tell people is it's something for a home. You really don't need anything bigger than this. I like, I like it unless you have a shop or something, you need something bigger. But this is easy to handle. It's not heavy, and this is even a little bit lighter. It's something you can put next to your stove, something for a quick fire. Mm -hmm. Extinguishers are not meant to use for a big fire. It's something small that you can tame. If it's a bigger fire, of course, exit your house and call the fire department. <clears throat> there are extinguishers you can buy from us. There are extinguishers you can buy from the store. These extinguishers you buy from us all have a gauge on them and are rechargeable. You can see the gauge right here. You see how it's in the green right there? And it says right on the gauge, if it goes out of the green and it goes to the left, that means it's lost pressure. And it'll tell you right on the gauge, recharge. If it goes past the green to the right, it says right on the gauge, overcharge. It's not as dangerous if it's overcharged. It means it's got a little too much pressure and it should be okay. But if it's lost pressure, even if it's got a seal on it, it hasn't been used, that might mean there's an O-ring in here that might have gone bad. So sometimes people think, well, I've never used it. It should be fine. That's not the case. It can, it can lose pressure. If you use an extinguisher, say you got just the smallest fire, and you just go, and you stop, and you go, oh, that's pretty full yet. Now, it's, just, it's like, a, I always say it's like a nail on a tire. It's gonna be a slow leak, and you'll lose pressure. You'll have to get it recharged. There's an archive extinguisher they sell in the stores. Same thing, it'll say ABC, as the pictorial says right here, ABC. A being trash, anything with an ash, wood. B being uh, liquid, as in oil, gas, and C being electrical. You want an ABC fire extinguisher because it'll be good for all purposes. They do sell BC extinguishers. For example, it would look just like that. It won't have the A, which then it won't be good for all fires, just kind of like the one I was showing you in the kitchen. The extinguishers you can get in a store are okay. Sometimes we have people bring them into us that don't have gauges on them. They just have a little button on there. If it says green, it's good to go. If not, we can't even tell you if they're going to work or not. People have brought them in and we've traded them out and we've given them one of ours. And we've used one of theirs in a demo just to see if it worked. And sometimes I did, and sometimes I didn't. I don't like that. I want to know one's going to work. Is there any questions? How much is that 10 This is a five pounder. Um, right there, it's about $50. $50 for the one with yep. the Yep, and this is about 35 for this one. Nice. And again, ours is rechargeable. And we do carry a two-year warranty on if they don't get used. It's like, say, it lost pressure, and it leaked off, and we fix it. Okay, but that, what they shouldn't. It's pretty unlikely. Where do we have to get a recharge? You would just, you could bring it down to our shop. Our shop's at 2407 Riverside in the town of Beloit. It's just, I prefer you get into Beloit on Riverside. You can bring them in there and we'll fix it. Um, another thing too, a lot of people ask us, this is your pull pin right here. And this is your carry handle. And this is your discharge level. So you can carry a fire extinguisher on all day like this. As soon as you push down on this, it'll spray. But see, I've got a pin in here which means if, like I say, you're moving something around your kitchen or moving the counter you're cleaning, you can walk around and do this. If this pins out of it and you just come down like this, you're gonna spray it. But this seal right here, all this seal is, is to hold this pin in place. And all it does is you just turn it like a key. You just snap it like that, or you can pull it straight out. It's about four pounds of pressure. It snaps really easy. And then you pull the pin out. And if, if you pull the pin out and say this breaks, just try to keep the pin in. But don't ever, like we've had some people put like, those wire ties on there or put something on there. Well, the bad thing is that is it'll hold the pin in, but you won't be able to break it. You got to be able to snap it with that pin. And that's what that does. That holds the pin in. I don't know if anybody wants to try pulling the pin just to see what it's like. No? You don't have to. I keep a small one in my car when I go on a trip or something. That's a very good idea. You know, you get on that 89, you're going around Chicago, and boy, I'm down there. It's 70, 80 miles an hour, and it's eight lanes deep. Isn't it something? It's wall-to-wall -wall cars. 
You know, and I've heard about fires around Chicago. Oh, like that. Yeah. It's something. It's something. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard about truckers saying that. And um, uh, so I went through the I pass. You know, I thought, well, okay, I missed it on the right. It was only one place for cash. It's on the right side. And if you get over too far to the right, you're going off the expressway into something else. So I thought, well, I'll just go through the I pass and pick when they send me the letter. It'll only be about twenty-five dollars. It was sixty-four dollars and ninety cents. Yeah. And you had the picture of my license plate, the state of Illinois. I wrote him a nice little caption on there. Rip off, state of <laughs> Illinois. That is. Well, it does say our, when you drive into Illinois, our state's broke. It says. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. All the money they're city. making on those tolls. Oh, that's something else. Yeah. You know? And and you can hardly help. You can hardly get over sometimes. There's wall to wall cars all over, and I, I'm not. Well, I think so that's driving. how they, I think that's how they get you. Yeah, it is. I think that's how they get you. Yeah. Um, it's uh, it's for me when I went down to Southern Illinois, it was it's over, it's over three. It's almost four dollars to go through a toll now. Oh yeah, it cost me thirteen dollars to go to Indiana. Yeah, when I went to Iowa back, back, and it cost me eighteen dollars. And, and, and then I missed one turn off, and I went, I went to 294, and so that takes you right through Chicago. There I was, seven, eight lanes out, and I seen Chicago right there. Two hours later, I was about a half a mile up. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> uh, my husband has one in the boat. Can that be used in the house? Yes. That's another good question, too. If you have a boat, I think if you're on the water, they require that. The yeah. DNR does. Yeah, that's why. Yes, and as long as, again... They're going to be looking for a gauge too. If there was anybody in here driving a DOT truck or, you know, when we had to tell semi drivers, DOT on the highway, if they were pulling over, not in your own car. They always look for this. They like to see the gauge. That's the first thing they look at. But again, the same thing. If you have one on the boat, they're going to look for the gauge. They're not looking for a tag or anything, but they're going to be looking for to see if it's charged and that you have one. Another thing, if you got one in the boat, if he's got one in the boat and you got one in your car, yeah. make sure it's, it's strapped down good, okay? Oh, yeah. Accessible. But if it, some people just throw out the vehicle and, and city trucks, I do the city, you know, we always tell them to make sure that it stays, because a couple times they've gotten out and, you know, this gets jarred up a couple times, bangs up against something, this breaks up, and before you know it, this is going off in your vehicle, and that's, I've had it happen, it's not fun. This is very dusty. Another thing with this ABC power is it's very good, but try not to inhale a lot of it, because it's very dusty, and clean it up as good as you can when you're done, because it is very corrosive. You know, it's corrosive to like wiring, uh, whether it's on your stove, make sure you clean everything off really good. What is actually in one? Oh, it's got, here I'll show you. Instead of telling you all of it right here, it'll tell you right there. Multi-purpose dry chemical. So make sure you really clean it out really good. Nuisance dust? Nuisance dust, I know that's my favorite. Contents but you want to make sure it's cleaned up really good and wiped down. Because if you don't, it hardens up and it'll chew your wiring up. And uh, yeah, we have about four of them or so. I okay. mean, there's two in the house and then in the shop and so forth. But they've all been on the green mark. Okay. But I looked at the one that had a tag on it and it was last inspected at 2000 Okay. But it's still, so that's still okay to leave. Yes, if you're in a the green mark. Right, if you're in a business, that has got to be tagged once a year. But at home use, if you keep an eye on it and it stays in the green, yeah, it's green, and I was surprised because I know that one is... You know, if you're at home and you're worried about the inspection, look inside the nozzle. Take the, If you have a hose unit like this, pull the hose out and look inside the hose. Let's make sure it's not plugged with anything, you know? Okay. That's one thing we got to look at, too. You want to make sure that the airway is clear. You don't want anything, anyway, stuffing anything up there and plugging it. That wouldn't be, that wouldn't be any good. So, always have your, if there ever is a fire, always to make sure you have your back to an exit. Don't ever corner yourself. That's very good. And when you're spraying a fire, say I've got a fire right here. I want to stand back 8 to 12 feet, and I want to be working my way forward side to side at the base of the fire. You know, and at the top of the fire. You want to hit right at the base because that's where the fire is. At the base of the fire, working your way forward, but you want to stay back. If you get right up, I've done a fire train before where we'll have a burn pan set up, and you know, we always have the wind at the back. So the dust is always going that way. You won't have that problem inside. It's going to be just dust and you're going to have a hard time seeing. But I had one guy get up too close to the fire right away because he thought he could get closer than 8 to 12 feet. And what he did is he sprayed the contents. Well, with all the pressure you got going out of there, that force and pressure is going to hit the bottom of that fire and it's going to spread. 
So you want to stand back and let the particle just take take place. Yep. Some people are walking you right on top of it. You're right on top of it. See, it's most, if you have a thing is with the pressure you're doing, you're going to spread it. So. But now these are never used on grease. Yes, this is all purpose. You can use it on what grease. Yes. Okay. If you get an ABC, you're safe. You can use it on anything. Electrical. Electrical and all, right? Yep. Grease, electrical. Yep. Now, you've been around antique cars. I don't know, you've maybe heard of Halon? Oh, yeah. Okay, now the Halon extinguisher is the same way. They may take that in ABC too. Those are good too. That's a clean agent. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't have those. Yeah. But that's no mess on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. But some people do ask me. Sometimes these people come and say, "We want to get rid of this." I go, "Well, it's actually the good stuff, you know." Yeah. It's more expensive. Though. Mm -hmm. It's expensive. So, is there any other questions? Are there fire extinguishers that are just for paper, or do they usually have ABC? ABC. Yes. No, you just want to use that for grease fires, yeah. Can you repeat question? Well, the question she had was, there, it's actually called a K-class fire extinguisher you have in there, which is for grease fires. And what you want to do is you want to use that just in there. That's a commercial fire extinguisher, which gives you the option to use that instead of letting the system down first, which that is a kitchen system. If that fire in there gets out of control, you can pull the manual pole on that pole station and it will dump. If you have a small little fire, it's, used, it's better to use that extinguisher instead of letting that whole system dump. But the kitchen, if you walked out of the kitchen and something was on the stove and it started on fire, with those heat tremblings, it'll go off by itself. So. Put flour on it. Flour on it? Yeah. I've got a whole bag of flour. I, you know, I've never mentioned flour to anybody because we had one lady tell us. I was in Madison doing a fire train once years ago, and she told me she put flour on it. And she burned all her cabinets up. It just went poof. Mm. So I don't know. I know there's some weed in there. I, oh, I don't, you don't know. No, just a small fire on a burner, a little oil yeah. on there. She said she dumped Especially the whole bag. That I'm she dumped the whole bag on it. It went poof. It was like ignited. Yeah. So I don't ever say that. <laughs> Is there asbestos inside of a fire extinguisher? No. Well, the only thing I would say, you know, it would it would probably uh, bring up, I would say, well, you, you really don't want to use water because that's going to steam everything up more. But probably like if you have a box of Army Ham baking powder, uh -huh. you could douse that on there. That's, that's got a good powder to it. Other than that, I don't know really else what you want to use. I don't want to say use something and then it doesn't work. Right. So. I can't remember. I, I know why I had one with the grease butter in the house. And, uh, of course, I panicked. I ran outside. <laughs> Left me burning. <laughs> right. But, but you son, do panic. But my son was there, and he had the smart. I think he, I can't remember if he threw salt. I thought he threw salt. I have never used salt before. I've heard salt will work. You can throw I a rug don't. over it. Yes. I thought that you know, you know, you get the flame down, throw right. a rug over it, and try to smother it. But the biggest thing is a couple, a couple months ago, my wife was, we got a newer oven, and she was doing the self clean. You know, you can turn it up and it'll look like 500 degrees, and it cleans the oven. She goes, Aaron, get up here. I came up the stairs, and she could see a fire start inside there. That gets hot. I really don't like that. I don't like being that hot. But what happened was the, the, the heating element that's mm -hmm. on the bottom, the weld broke. Well, and that weld broke, which sits right above the pan of the, of the, the stove, it had some crumbs and stuff, and then there was that actually a small fire going on. The first thing you do, I told her, don't even open that door, because you're letting oxygen into it. And then so she, I said, shut it off. Just don't even put an extinguisher. You shut it off. And that's like if you have a pan, you know, and then some, a fire starts on it, put a, put a top on it or shut, shut it off. Shut off right. Exactly. But with the self cleaning ovens, you can't open them in a week until the <laughs> cycle is completed. Right. You have one too? Yes. But I, I don't, don't like them. I, well, I don't either. That, that's I'm just too hot. Right well, that's my told her. I says, you know, if you're going to use those self cleaned ovens, try to get the particle off, you know, crumb or, yeah. you know, because it's, it's, it's hot. <laughs> well, the, the fumes are so bad. Yeah. Um, and I told her, I says, if you got that on, don't walk away from it. <laughs> you know, try to be in the kitchen while it's going. So. I was told by somebody recently that you should unplug things, like toasters and coffee makers. And, is that true? Um, I don't see a problem with a toaster. Coffee maker. 
Yeah, I mean, we're hearing more and more of that now. Um, I'm always one of those, if we leave on vacation, I unplug everything and you get a fire. I don't know why, I just, I get paranoid. My biggest thing is, is if, I don't run your dryer if you're gone. Don't run your clothes dryer. You know, if you're drying clothes, my wife does it all the time. But I, I always like to, I go, for leave, I don't care if we're going to the door store, shut it off. Because we have seen, we have seen, yeah, I know. And it is easy to happen. I'll let this go, because by the time I get back, I can switch loads. It's easy. But it, shut it off. We've seen some, we've seen some fires. That one house over on, uh, on the other side of town burned down. It was it three days before Christmas last year? And it was a wind fire. Mm -hmm. You know. I know of a lady, though, that uh, used to do her running to work. And she left her toaster plug there. And she came home, her countertop had started on fire. So I wonder if it could have been hot, you know, clean them out good. Yeah, so, you know, there is a it would, in there. You know, it wouldn't be a bad idea with a the toaster then, I would say. But I think about it, my wife, he makes the kids toast in the morning, she does unplug it. Well, I have a fish tank, for instance, with a filter on it, and I knew that going to my lawn. You know, I mean, that's safe, isn't it? I would think so. I think you'd be safe. Well, fish will die. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there are some electrical things that, I think, like computers, I think people would build something. But then they got power surges on those, too. Yeah. It should help that a little bit. Yeah, I always like to shut our computers off. It, it's just safer. Shut everything mm -hmm. down. You know, so. Did you have some information about smoke detectors? I don't have anything. I mean, I was trying to look for something. We don't have anything on us. What I can do, though, I will drop off some pamphlets in your office okay. on how to use a fire extinguisher, mm -hmm. and you can just hand them out to people. Okay. So people that weren't here, it shows kind of the operating use of a fire extinguisher. And if you guys even though you went through the class, you can pick one up too. I will get those. I forgot those, but I will get you some of those. Smoke detector, we require right around 10 years you want to replace one. Carbon dioxide detector, we're replacing right around five years. And don't go 10 years from when you bought it. Go 10 years, look at the manufacturing date. A lot of times where you put the batteries in, there'll be a little date in there. Because you can go buy a smoke detector right now, and it might be two years older. Yeah, set on the, on the shelf. Shelf life, exactly. Even, even hardwired? Same way. Same way, 10 years. So, and it's not so much the wiring itself, it's the detector itself. Carbon monoxide use says 10 years? Five. 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 Okay. Then I've had people say, what if I got a carbon monoxide slash smoke? Because you can get them both, like I do, five years. I, you know, I know it's expensive, but I'm more, big on, I'm more big on the carbon monoxide myself in the wintertime. I like, that's a scary... We came home, we went camping, we went camping last year. We came home, it was summertime. We came home, got the camper in Lord, went in the house, and the thing was going off. So carbon monoxide detectors went well. My wife being a nurse panic too, because it's odorless, you know. So I says, well, you know, they were right at the five year mark. They was right at five years, those were. And I thought I had a little bit of wiggle room yet to wait, because, you know, I really don't worry too much about carbon monoxide until wintertime when the furnace is running more. But, um, I, I looked at it, I was right at five years, and so I called the Lion Energy out, and they came and looked at it. I know I probably paid a little bit of a service call, but I've got two little ones yet, you know, so I want to make sure. And he tested us, everything was fine. That just meant my detectors were old. That was a scary way of finding out. Well, you can get the plug in one, just plug in the side. That's what I have. It's just plug them in. And then they have a battery backup, but the power goes out, I think yeah. the battery's good for like six hours on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, so those are nice. It's an easy go. Yep. That's a good time to do it. Everybody says a daylight savings time. I always do it January 1st and the 4th of July, right in the middle of the year. Twice a year. Twice a year, yeah. Yeah, twice a year, I should say. A lot of the fire department, too, they got a good way of saying they just say uh, daylight savings time every time. That's a good time to do it, too. So. All right, any other questions? All right. What are the temperature extremes for storage? There is none. There is none. If you have a liquid extinguisher, whether it's a water extinguisher or a halon extinguisher, if it gets below freezing, it's going to probably lose pressure. Water will freeze. Mm -hmm. And the halon unit will lose pressure. Well, then, and if you get in warm weather, it's actually a halon will actually reseal it. Yep. Climb yep. Up. Yep. So, good question. All right, well, thank you very much. I will leave pamphlets for everybody else. All right. Thank you. I'm going to show you the use of a fire extinguisher. About four pounds of pressure, turn your pin, 
to pull. This is your carry handle. You want to pull your hose out of the holder. This is your top handle right here is your uh, discharge lever. You push down, spraying the fire at the base of the fire, standing 8 to 12 feet back. When you're done, you put it back. This right here is your gauge, and it will show after your use. The gauge should go down in a recharge position, and that's when you must get it refilled.